this recording. I am starting this mm -hmm. recording. Uh, my noise gate's off, and we're ready for your clap. All right, here we go in three, two, one. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you? I have no complaints, but once again, Kyle, much like the Monday episode, which, by the way, was really good, and y'all should go listen to it, uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com or your podcast app of choice, always be plugging. Um, we, were, we, we were very Ohio State focused on Monday. Uh, it is now Wednesday. And we're going more of a national focus, which is why we're... Oh, hold on. I still have the Sloop Camp logo up. And uh, Collegiate Chaos. There we go. Now we're going national. Uh, we're going to take a look at the national landscape. We're going to do some national predictions. Um, and much like the Big Ten preview that we did a few weeks back, uh, we will be following along, uh, essentially kind of inviting them in as a virtual third host. The... Uh, uh, the guys over at Pick Six Preview. I keep saying guys; it's really only a single guy. Uh, but we uh, following along through their guide and just sort of providing some commentary as we go. Sure thing. All right, let's look at uh, their projected All Americans. Um, Kyle, are you looking at the show notes right now? And if you're not, don't. Right. Nah, not. you are. Uh, okay. <laughs> all, right. Just... all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All uh, right. Chat. I'll ask the chat instead. Chat. How many Ohio State players do you think are in the too deep? In terms of what? Uh, the All Americans. All Americans. Yeah. Oh, uh, see you, Gangland. Six. Austin says six. Zach says eight. In the two deep, defense and offense. Defense and offense. Although I'm letting you know right now, you're not going to add a ton on the defense. In the two deep, uh, you'd put the number at five and a half. Defense two. Uh, but you'd say six. Uh, there are zero in the two deep. On the def on the defensive side, uh, Zachary Harrison, Denzel Burke do make third team All Americans. Um, no, none on the fourth team, the first team, or the second team for the defense. Which, uh, quite frankly, I think is fair. Um, I I don't I don't have an issue with that. On the offense, guys in the two deep. Uh, you, uh, Stroud, PJJ, JSN, Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey, and Dwan. Um, Paris is first team. Dwan is second team. So yes on those two. They're not going to give it to Marvin Harrison Jr. He's not. Nope. He's only started one game. Even if it's true, even if he deserves it, they're not going to put him on. The, I don't. Did he even make the Big Ten? Did he even make the the Big Ten All Americans? I if you can scroll down through there, Kyle, maybe and and find out or don't. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, he only started one game. That's he's not going to make it. Uh, JSN and Paris Johnson are the only first team on the offense. Uh, CJ Stroud does make second team. Dwan Jones makes second team. And that's it. Four. So that's a grand total of four. Y'all all overshot. Spike said seven. Zach said eight. Austin said six. Um, Trey does make third team. And that's it on the four deep. Yeah, so for running backs first team, they have Ibrahim and uh, Jamar Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs from Alabama. And then second team, they have Deuce Vaughn from Kansas State and... Uh, and Robinson from Texas, which is I uh, nah. nah, nah, 
Nah. No, I'm taking Trey over every single one of those guys. I I said it. I said it during the Big Ten preview we did a few weeks back when they had Ibrahim over Henderson. Yeah, I would take Bijan Robinson over. I, I would. I my my one and my two would be Robinson and Henderson. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. What? Yes. Austin just said it as well. In some order. Yes. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yep. Yep. JSN, like I said, does make first team. By the way, I'd take CJ Stroud over Bryce Young. In a heartbeat. Maybe I'm being a homer right now. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. Uh, CJ is. I think so. The NFL people think so. What is Bryce actually done? He's, he's a good quarterback. Like, let's not, yes. let's not, you know, we, we don't have to be no. like haters about it. So um, I'm looking here, other notable names here. Uh, offensively, for the, um, uh, Michigan has two second round or second team on the offense. Uh, they're, Two linemen, uh, Ryan Hayes and Zach Zinner. Um, Jarrett Patterson that we mentioned before and on Monday's episode, Jared, uh, uh, for Notre Dame, what made first team. So that, again, big issue for, for Notre Dame in week one. Um, also, Does the chat, hold on real quick. I want to let the chat guess on something real quick. Who do you think we already told you that they have Bryce Young as QB one, CJ Stroud QB two. You guys want to take some guesses at QB three and four while Kyle uh, finishes up what he was doing. And the other the other player that Notre Dame has in, in the two deep is uh, Michael Mayer, uh, tight uh, stellar, stellar tight end as well. And defense. Oh, by the way, Kyle, you notice that the Notre Dame player. Jarrett Patterson, mm-hmm. he's the one that's hurt. That's what I just said. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading the <laughs> chat. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then I was defense, reading the chat. I apologize. And then defensively, uh, Notre Dame has Isaiah uh, Foskey, the defensive lineman, and defensive back Brandon Joseph. Uh, so defensively, also Jared, Ohio State does have two third round or not third. Keep saying third round, third team, according to Pick Six, and that is uh, Zach Harrison and yeah. Denzel Burke. Yeah, yeah. Um, every time I look at, uh, but Jordan Battle, who I, I think is a guy who anyone who follows Ohio State recruiting knows. Every time I see him, um, next there, uh, just like Jordan Battle should have come to Ohio State. Well, not just that, but also look at in the first team defensive backs too, who Ohio State just played against. Clark Phillips. There's another name there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by yeah, the way, the is- answer, uh, Austin said Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler. Uh, n- no one really, I, I don't know. Like, I. You're correct on Caleb Williams. Rattler, I understand why you'd put that there, because I know some people refuse to let that hype die. Um, but the guys at pick six are smarter than that. Uh, they have, uh, this was a bit of a surprise to me, quarterback from Tennessee, Hendon Hooker as the fourth team quarterback. Which, I, I don't know if I agree with it, but I also don't necessarily know who I'd put there. If I'm being honest, I don't know who I would say is absolutely the fourth quarterback. So it's easy to say, no, I don't think so. But again, I, I don't have a single name who I'd be willing to die on a hill for to, to put in that spot. So I I'll, I'm not, I'm not going to criticize it too hard. Um, yes, Tennessee is trash. Is that not a gif? Is it not giving? I oh, wish it was going to give. All right. All right. I'm, 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 I'm thinking Tennessee I'm, I'm may just... actually deserve the hype this year. I do not. Because the SEC is trash. 
Uh, I mean, Georgia is is still good. Like, I know. There we go. I know Georgia lost a lot of guys to the draft. So, like, their defense isn't going to be as good this year as it was last year. I get that. Um, Florida's going to be better than some people think this year, you think. Maybe. Like, yeah, okay. If better, yeah, if, if you're saying eight and four, then I would say that's a possibility. Because Zach is right. There's not a lot of depth to the SEC East. Um, well, let's, well, let's jump into that, Jared, then. The, the, the next I, just, I did want to point out real quick that even though Georgia lost a ton of players to the draft, especially in that There's defense, they still return per pick six preview. They still return three first team all Americans. One in each group, one defensive lineman, one linebacker, one defensive back. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, so do you want to cover the conferences next year? Um, we can do conferences or we can do the I think the position groups are really interesting. The top ranked position groups. All right. I think I'll just, still all right. Well, I'll just I'll just read uh just the top five here um for each of the categories here. So quarterbacks here, and again, Jared, you give me so much shit. You give me so much shit, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you that. They're going to be a surprise here. They're actually a pretty decent team. Probably can be right up there if all goes well. They could maybe compete to be the best in the ACC here. And it's led by their um, their quarterback here. That's NC State coming in at number five, the fifth best um, quarterback in group in the country. Listen, NC State could actually be pretty decent this year. And that has a lot to do with the ACC being hot fucking garbage right now. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, let's just say what it is. Um, Clemson is not up to Clemson standards still. Um, uh, it's why Pitt was decent last year with Pickett. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Austin. Um, NC State could make some moves this year, not because I think they're all that great, but because, again, the ACC is hot fucking garbo right now. Um, Kyle, Georgia gets number one in the running back groups, despite not having a single running back. Yeah, I don't understand. In the, <laughs> they, they just must be really deep because there are eight running backs listed as all Americans. None of them from Georgia. They just must be insanely deep. All right. So running backs, Wisconsin, Texas, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia. Ohio State placing I, in the top three again. You, you, you take that. You take that. You take that. Yep. They have five, like five. They have like five high four star or five stars. That's fair. I mean, Ohio State had four up until at the time of publishing. Ohio State had four. Yeah. Wide receiver and tight ends. Ohio State, fifth number is, one. Fifth is Alabama, Georgia, Texas, USC, and Ohio State. Yeah. It, uh, uh, the I'll the pick, wide receivers pick, at Ohio State are just stupid deep. Absolutely stupid deep. Yeah. Offensive linemen. Arkansas, Oregon, Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan. So what we've seen so far, and if we're looking at the top five, which is exactly what we're doing right now, you see Ohio State, Alabama, and Georgia placed in the top five of each of the groups we've named so far. Except for offensive line for Alabama. But Oh, that's right. Pretty... Bama is six. Yep. That's, that's weird because they normally are like the best offensive line in the country each year. So close enough sixth. It's it's right there. It's not the top five. <laughs> All right. Defense, Jared. I agree, Austin. I also think they have a good line. I, I don't necessarily understand that ranking, if I'm being honest with you. So defensively here, on the defensive line, and number five is Iowa, then Utah, Baylor, Georgia, and Clemson. And Ohio State comes in at six. Uh, this is, this is ridiculous. Um, yeah. Ohio state is ranked so much higher than that. I don't care. 
Iowa has some really good linebackers, but they don't have a better defensive line than Ohio State. Utah does not have a better defensive line than Ohio State. Baylor does not. Georgia does. Okay, I'll yeah. give you. I'll I'll give you Georgia. Linebackers, Oregon, NC State, Georgia, Iowa, and Alabama. Ohio State for linebackers comes in at thirteen. Yeah, this is Ohio State. Real. This is Ohio State's first real bad fall off here. Um, falling all the way down to 13, 13 is too high. Um, I think, I think you underestimate, I, you're thinking about Ohio state's linebackers in terms of say what you want about scheme, Jared, you don't care. Scheme plays a huge issue, but also you're thinking about Ohio state's linebackers on the scale of Ohio State linebackers. You're not thinking about Ohio State linebackers on the scale of everybody else's linebackers. Ohio State's linebackers are not where we want them to be as Ohio State fans. But most of the programs in the nation would run over their mother for our linebackers. Mm -hmm. And then to finish up here for defensive backs, Clemson, Penn State, NC State, Georgia, and Alabama. And Ohio State comes in at nine. I think that's um, I think underrated it's again. No, I think it's I think it's fair, but I think they I think by the end of the season they'll be much much higher than than the preseason rank from pick six. I mean I can I can understand. But I, I think talent wise out so much better. Okay. Um, yeah, I, the Ohio State safeties are stupid deep right now. Absolutely stupid deep. All they really need to do is find one reliable second cornerback. Denzel Burke's one of the best in the country. Whichever safety group they end up rolling with will be one of the best safety groups in the country. As long as they find one or two very dependable cornerbacks to play opposite. They'll be fine. And again, like I understand why Ohio State's so far down on this list. I get it. I really, really, I understand it because one of, one of the issues here is that they were just schematically garbage last year. The players are so much better, so mm. much better. Um, you can't rank them higher till they prove it. You, you kind of can. Like, when we're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. before, we're talking about an individual. You can't, you can't count recruiting stars when you're making someone an All-American, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about position groups, I mean, they put Georgia at number one for running backs, even though not a single guy actually made their top eight running backs. That's just off of potential and recruiting stars. All right, you're right. The let's... defense showed you nothing last year. Austin, based on that, you're absolutely right. But that does not. That is that was a schematic issue. 100 percent. And then you also have to factor in how many of the great defensive backs on this team are currently second year players. Mm hmm. Biggest leap forward for players between year one and year two. All right, Jared, let's let's get into the conferences right now. So for we'll start with the ACC here. Yeah, yeah. Kyle is so Kyle is so excited to talk about the ACC. We'll start with the coastal first, Jared. He is so excited <laughs> to talk about the Atlantic. <laughs> we'll start with the coastal. Uh, Kyle, for before we before we get started. ACC, where do they rank as a conference for you this year? Um, third. I agree. All right, cool. But here's the, th on. here's the thing. <laughs> but here's the thing. It, it could easily be four. I'd say it three. Might, I think it's, it, maybe it's tied for three. Okay. It could be fifth, to be honest. I, um, you have more faith in the Big 12 than I do. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to say the Pac-12. No, I think the Pac-12 is going to be good this year. Okay. 
All right. So in the coastal, Jared, they have Miami, Pittsburgh, and UNC as the top three. Sure. I Pittsburgh's <laughs> too high. As as Austin pointed out before, that was that was all Kenny Pickett. You get a you get a really experienced, talented quarterback in a lousy conference, and that's gonna take you really, really far. Guess what? Kenny Pickett. I was about to say Kenny Pickett's not in Pittsburgh anymore, but that's not technically true. He's not enrolled yes. at Pittsburgh anymore. It's really, it's it's Miami and UNC's to win this year. It's I I but I'd probably go with UNC um, over Miami. But yeah, I it's kind of kind of like the uh, Big Ten West where it's eh, okay, <laughs> but it's it's the Atlantic side that's going to be the determining factor of who's going to win, win that conference. And, um, 100%. I, I, I can't quite read this. Maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. it's, uh, maybe, maybe it's a little blurry on my screen here, uh-huh. Jared, but who's, who's, who does pick pick six has, has as their uh, first, first in the Atlantic division. NC state. Okay. All right. Awesome. Do, do, do you know why that is? Or maybe it was a typo or. Uh, they have a, Pretty good defense and an experience. They have this year's Kenny Pickett. They, they mm-hmm. have an experienced, uh, Devin, decent, Devin pretty Leary good quarterback in a lousy conference. Yep. Devin Leary is the name there that you're going to have to remember. And, and if you look at the I, defense, I'm not going to have to remember shit. <laughs> if you look at the defense here, Jared. Yeah. NC State there is ranked in the top 10 in each of those categories, too. Yeah, um, by far their worst is defensive line. Their linebackers are third and their, excuse me, their linebackers are fourth and their defensive backs are third. I think their defensive backs are overrated in that sense. Um, I don't think that their defensive backs are better than Penn State's or Clemson's. Um, but they're they're good. But regardless, they're still really good. Uh, Leary is the third best quarterback in his own state. Woo! Oh, Austin's throwing fire on your boy, Kyle. <laughs> All right, and, and following up, NC State's Clemson and tied for third, Louisville and Florida State. Does so, yeah, a it's, team. It, it's NC just, State and Clemson. It, it's NC State and Clemson in, in this division. I'm going to ask a very serious question. This is going to sound like I'm throwing shade for no mm-hmm. good reason. All right. But I'm going to ask it anyway. Does any team in college football do less with more than Florida State? Is any team better at taking excellent draft classes, not draft classes, recruiting classes, and doing nothing with them? Well, in recent years, Michigan did for, for, for a few years. That's, that's fair. FSU recruiting hasn't been amazing lately. It hasn't been bad, though. Texas A&M. Listen, Texas A&M. Texas. Here's the thing about Texas A&M. They have to deal with with Bama. Mm -hmm. Like. They have to deal with Bama. (laughs) Uh, I mean, we could say Notre Dame. Notre Dame's at least been to the playoffs. Twice, twice, once. Mm-hmm. Uh, the answer is Texas A&M. Austin says. Texas A&M still has really good seasons. They not gotten over the Bama Hill. Getting over that Bama Hill is very, very tough. Um, but they're still putting together really good seasons. Florida State gets excellent recruits and then goes 500. Like, I'm not just talking about not meeting expectations. I'm talking about having really good recruiting classes Mm -hmm. and then not even putting together okay seasons. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to the tape on this one. Go into the tape. All right, Jared. Go into the tape. Because I think I think that Pick Six Previews actually has a f- something 
in here related to this. Um, Kyle, do you want to intro the next conference while I look this up? Uh, I'm going to skip the Big Ten because we already talked about the Big Ten uh, a week ago, a couple weeks ago. We did a Big Ten preview a couple weeks ago. Uh, We agreed with, just as a summary, like we agreed that the... We agreed that the conference championship game was going to be Ohio State versus Wisconsin. Although I think I don't know if Kyle co-signed this. I do think Iowa's was actually better than Wisconsin this year. But I do think also that Iowa plays a tougher schedule than Wisconsin this year. Um, so even though I even though I like Iowa more, I do think Wisconsin ends up winning their division f- yep. for reasons mentioned. By mm-hmm. the way, um Player development and win conversion. Um, The stat compares the program's recruiting level to their actual output in the win column. Okay. Number one in this is BYU. Number two is Iowa State. Number three is Iowa. Number four is Oklahoma State. Uh, Number five is Utah. So that's your top five. Um, Your... (laughs) <laughs> here you ready for your bottom all right number 65 because they, they only do the power five number five or excuse me number 66 which is last place florida state nice <laughs> uh then nebraska then ucla then arkansas then tennessee then unc maryland ole miss usc vanderbilt south carolina stanford those are your worst in win conversion. Okay. Nice. All right. So the next one here, Jared, is the Big 12. So in the Big 12 here, uh, fifth place, they have Kansas State and then Oklahoma State, then Texas, Baylor, and Oklahoma. I- um, That's fine. Uh, I... So ask me the question. Ask me the question, Jared, about which um, where where this conference ranks among all Power Five conferences. Well, I, should we should we say the Big Ten since since we skipped that one? Where does the Big Ten rank among all the conferences? I think this year it's got to be second. It's second. I think yeah. it's it's second. Yeah. It's second. The, it's 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 not a very deep conference. It's mm. SEC is number one. They have Georgia and Bama, who are in the top three teams, the top three teams this year, in some order, y'all can figure out the order in your own head. The top three teams in the country this year are Ohio state, Bama and Georgia. And I think there's a huge fall off to fourth. If the West wasn't so good, if the West wasn't so good, it could be one. Oh, the, uh, in the sec, the sec West, Uh, sec is, is number one. Um, So Big Twelve, Jared. I, where is I think, I think where's the I Big think, Twelve I, ranked? In terms of the Power Five, yeah. I put them. I put them. I put them in fifth. Yeah, absolutely, dead last. Uh, Oklahoma is far and away. You'd say the Big Twelve fourth, Austin? No, Look, Oklahoma is a it, Oklahoma should be the best team in this conference, and they have so many question marks. It's so many, and they've lost. So they many lost the transfer portal a too. ton of talent to the transfer portal. They lost their coach to the transfer portal. They just fired like one of their longtime assistants. Um, I, I don't know if, if if Venables is a is a head coach. Um, based on some of the shit I've been hearing about what's been going on there. Austin says that Texas will win the Big 12. Well, that just depends upon if Quinn Ewers is is going to live up to the hype. Like that that's what it. The reports are saying <laughs> it is totally up to if you if Ewers is up to the hype, he'll be no, they'll be he, they'll win the conference. He he was announced he was announced either today or yesterday uh Austin he, that that he he is QB1. They were going to give it yes. Yes, he's announced as the starter. But here's the thing. He was always going to be announced as the starter. There was zero chance in hell 
zero chance in hell they weren't going to announce him as the starter. He transferred to Texas with a... The reason he left Ohio State is because he walked into Ryan Day's office and said, guarantee me I'm going to be the starter next year or I transfer. C.J. Stroud, Heisman finalist, and you always thought he was going to, you know, sit on the bench. So if you think he went to Texas without a guarantee, if you think he went to Texas without a guarantee, you're high. Yeah. He was always uh, going to start. I, so he would have had to been so much. He would have been have to been so much worse than than Hudson Card mm-hmm. that they'd be willing to let him transfer. That's how much worse he would have had to have been than Card. If he was, even if he was slightly worse than Card, they were still going to start him. And maybe he's better. Maybe he's way better. Maybe they're the same. I don't know. So they have, so they have Baylor at number two here. I know Baylor has a pretty good offensive line. They have a really good defensive line. But outside of that, I just, I don't really know much about Baylor. Uh, they're, they're fine by big 12 standards. They, they'd finish third in the big 10 West. I'll tell you that much. There wasn't a West in the big 10 West. Oh, big 10 West. Okay. Yeah. I thought you said big 12. Okay. Um, all right. So next one here, pack 12, pack 12. I think on the, in the North division, I think it's it's all Oregon. I don't think there's anybody close to Oregon at all. Washington could. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll. They're number two, and they should be number two. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, they have Washington two, then Oregon State at three. Sure, but it's it's all Oregon in the in the North uh, Division. And then in the South here, they have UCLA third usc two and utah one all right this is the point where i point out that the guys ever pick six previews fucking love utah i keep saying guys it's a guy the guy at pick six previews loves utah and i i think utah is very good i'm not going to say that they aren't very good because they are i i don't i think they're overhyped I think pick six previews is overhyping them. I think USC wins the South. I think USC wins, wins the entire Pac-12. I think USC, for the first time ever, I'm the one that always mocks people for the, is Texas back? Is USC back? Are they back? Are they back? Are they back? I'm the first one that makes fun of everyone for buying into program hype. Oh my God, are they back? Is Michigan back? Are they back? I... Uh, Austin says Texas will be back this year. No, they won't. I mean, maybe, if Quinn Ewers is everything he's supposed to be, maybe. But he has to be everything he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So I think I think but USC think has a proven season. quarterback, a proven head coach, proven wide receivers. And are they going to struggle on the defensive side of the ball? Yes. They I, will. I think I- I think as a preseason ranking, I agree having Utah one and then USC two. But when it's all said and done, I think I agree, Jared. I think USC will win their division there and it'll be USC versus Oregon in the Pac-12 championship. But I I can't disagree as a preseason ranking. I and I I understand where you're coming from, and I'm not gonna disagree with that. Uh Austin says Caleb Williams is overrated. I think he's a third. Be- I, I, one of the things I think that they do nail at pick six is that he's the third best quarterback in college football. You highly disagree. Eh, that's fine. <laughs> Jared's not in a, in a, uh, not hey, well, he disagrees. What, 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 can, what can I say to he, he says he disagrees. I, I can't tell him that he doesn't disagree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe uh, not top 20. Okay. N- now I can tell you that your opinion's wrong. Now I can say your opinion's wrong. Your Austin, right. your opinion is wrong. <laughs> all right. And the last one here, SEC. So Utah had all, or excuse me, Oklahoma had all sorts of problems last year. 
Um, the Spencer Rattler thing was throwing shit off. I I think that they're in a new environment. Um, I think that, quite frankly, that their schedule is going to be easier, if we're being honest. Because while I do think the Pac-12 is top-heavier, much top-heavier than the Big 12, the depth isn't there right now. Because once you get past Utah, USC, Oregon, it goes downhill real fast. Mm -hmm. All right. SEC West. Arkansas, then Texas A&M, and then Alabama. I can't, I can't disagree with the top two, Alabama and Texas A&M. They have LSU as the, as sixth and Auburn as seventh in that, in that division. Yeah. That's a, that, that's, that's tough to see. <laughs> so tough. I, I agree. Alabama, Texas A&M one, two. I just, I guess I just don't know enough about the other, the other. No, teams that's there. I. The only thing I might, the only thing I might be like, and this is honestly kind of nitpicky. I might put Ole Miss three in Arkansas four, but whatever. Like you could also call them tied at third or tied at fourth for all I give a shit. Um, because it, it's yeah. it's again like like we talked about before with with the pack 12 is that it's a pretty deep nosedive after two yes arkansas like is good this year you think yeah good but they're like not the they're not on the same level as texas a&m and they sure as hell aren't on the same level as bama kind of like um there's a big drop off after two there's a big drop off after one in the sec east and yeah. that's georgia big drop down from there I mean, now, Austin, now, I, yeah, I, now. I, Austin, I think that they did beat A&M last year, but like Michigan beat Ohio State last year. Purdue yeah. beat Ohio State once and yeah. Iowa beat Ohio State once like shit happens. Now, like, I know there's a lot of hype with the Tennessee quarterback here, but what else does Tennessee have going for them? Uh, I don't know. This is like, who else do you put there, in my opinion? Tennessee has some good receivers, Austin says. So let's let's scroll up, Kyle. Let's look at the position groups. Uh, they have Tennessee as fourth in the quarterbacks. Uh, they do not show up on the running backs list. They show up ninth on the receiver list. They do not show up on the offensive line list. Kyle, is it? Your your video is is gone bonkers. Not sure. I will turn off and turn back on. Um, they are not on the defensive line list. They are not on the line that worked. You look better now. They are not on the linebackers list, and they are not on the defensive backs list. Tennessee only shows up in the top position groups twice. And that apparently is good enough to get them second in the in the SEC East. No, not not offensive line, Austin. So basically, we just said offensive line receivers. No, quarterback and receivers. They're not. They don't make the top fifteen in the offensive line. Kentucky does. Have, yeah, and then after Tennessee, they have tied for third Florida and Kentucky. Yeah, it, I, it is. I, I, the SEC East is garbage past Georgia. Like this, this might be the steepest. Kyle, is this the steepest nosedive? From one to from, two? Um, I'm looking at the others. Yeah, it it is. I mean, it is. You, you, you can talk about maybe how big of a one Oregon to Washington may be, but yeah, Georgia to Tennessee is the, is the biggest. I would almost say Oklahoma to Baylor, but I'm real low on Oklahoma right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yep. Playoff prediction. So uh, well, have... Austin, the, the, the pick six guys have Texas third. They have Baylor second. Yeah. Um, so I'm so going the... off of 
their rankings. So pick six has your Alabama will play Utah and then Ohio State will play Georgia. Yeah. So Kyle, we agree. And for the sake of fast forwarding through this part of the argument, let's, let's just go with pick six, Bama one, Ohio state two, Georgia three. Yep. We will use their order. I don't feel like arguing one versus two, two versus three, but those are your top three. Who's four. I, they have the, Utah. I don't see it. The winner of the Pac-12. So Utah, Oregon, U- Utah, USC, or Oregon or USC. Yeah. Could we potentially make a case? Would they put NC State in? Would they put, they have to, they'd have to go undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. If they were undefeated. Yes. You, you put in NC state. Yes. Let me, let me put this out here for you. Um, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come at you from a weird spot here. So let's, let's play a game. Okay. Um, where am I at? Where am I at? Yeah, because NC, NC State has currently in the preseason rankings, which preseason rankings are bullshit. Um, preseason rankings, they have they only play two top twenty-five teams, and their out of conference games consist of East Carolina, Charleston Southern, and uh, Texas Tech. All very winnable. Um, yeah, well, I, I was just I was just Georgia saying, versus not, Utah, Ohio a, State versus Texas A and M. It's not a Both. good out of conference schedule, which is why I'm saying they, they would have to go yeah. undefeated. Yeah. Uh, by the both Zach and Austin are not saying Bama; they're putting Texas A and M in instead. Hmm. I just don't see it with with the firepower that Alabama has this year. Just. I think it's a really, really good Bama. Like, it's always a really, really good Bama team, but this is a really, really good Bama team, I think. This is a really, really good. Um, uh, but they drop one West game and then to Georgia. Or they don't, or it might depend upon who that one game is. Like, I don't know. Like, if Auburn, if, if, if Auburn does their Auburn thing and upsets Bama... And that won't affect them in the tiebreaker at all. You see what I mean? Um, All right, Kyle, what happens? Let's play a game. Let's say that Notre Dame loses to Ohio State, but that they look respectable while doing so. They don't get completely run off the field. Maybe they lose by 10. Okay. They lose by 10 at home to Notre Dame. No, okay. Ohio State. Ohio State wins. Oh, I misunderstood. Sorry. Ohio State wins by 10. Yeah. Okay. So Notre Dame, respectable loss to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Then they play Marshall. They they beat Marshall. Mm-hmm. They play California. They beat California. Maybe they even look really good against California. Then they travel to North Carolina. Now, North Carolina, pretty good team, top 25 team. Let's say they have a really good game against North. They, you know, they have a they have a f- redshirt freshman quarterback. They're installing a new offense. Maybe they get a couple guys back from injury. Maybe they start hitting a stride. And let's say they have a really nice game against UNC and win convincingly. Okay. Now, let's say they beat BYU, mm-hmm. who's a, pr- a pretty good team. BYU is a pretty good team, and they do so in a convincing fashion. Okay. Stanford's not very good, so they they do what they should do against Stanford. UNLV is UNLV. They do what they should against UNLV. Let's say they just demolished Syracuse. 
let's say they have a hard fought but decisive again maybe this time it's 10 points but in their favor win against clemson it is it is home this year for them it is now let's say that they they kind of look ugly but beat navy because that's that's the only way you actually beat navy right is it kind of an ugly w uh they demolish boston college uh second to last game now in the last game of the year they're playing usc let's say usc is rolling into that game as a top 10 team maybe one loss to utah eh, someone one loss to someone doesn't matter who maybe two losses maybe one conference law but now let's say one loss they're a top 10 football team Notre Dame rolls in with one loss, a top 10 football team. Could Notre Dame lose to Ohio State, respectfully lose to Ohio State, mature through a young team, young team, young quarterback, get some guys back from injury, mature, become a really good football team by the end of the year, which I think is very possible for, for Notre Dame, by the way. Well, one of the best parts about Ohio State playing Notre Dame in Ohio State's favor is that they play them week one. Yeah. So Notre yeah. Dame, by November, becomes a really good football team. They, they are a one-loss top 10 against a USC, at USC, by the way, who is also theoretically a one-loss top 10 could Notre Dame get into the playoffs? Beating USC. It's, 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 it's going to our, it's going to one of our rules, Jared. Okay. It's going to one of our rules. You get, you get, you get, oh. you get one life. Yeah. You get you one get, Mario, man. You one, you get one Mario. You get one Mario. By the way, Austin, you asked about what's rule three the other day. That that's rule three. It's don't lose twice. Yep. And I, I don't see Notre Dame losing only once this year i see them losing more than one uh, we were going but, through a theoretical yes but theoretically you have wins over unc potentially a top 25 byu potentially a top 25 clemson and usc those are really good wins to have in your resume i yeah i i think there's a very good case to put notre dame in there yes Kyle, we started all of this talking about who's your fourth team in the playoff. I, I'm still picking I USC. Still no, I still don't see Notre Dame, but I'm picking USC. Still, <laughs> still USC. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, but if Notre guys, Dame does fulfill the thing I put out, they 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 could do it. All right, what do you guys what do you guys think uh for that fourth fourth spot? I mean, we all anybody uh, they anybody, already everybody they, would pretty much agree Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, in some order would be our top three. Who's who's well, gonna be that Zach, fourth? Spot? Uh Zach and Austin already did it. Neither of them put Bama in. Zach said Ohio State, Texas AM, Georgia, and Baylor. I am not that high on Baylor. I with, with all due respect, uh, uh, George uh, Austin said Georgia, Utah, Ohio State, Texas A&M. So one of them. So they both put in Texas A&M instead of Alabama. Uh, Austin picked Utah and Zach picked Baylor. Guys are high. <laughs> I, I Bama's going to make the playoffs this year. I, I mean, you know, it's any given Saturday. Like Texas A&M is good enough to beat is good enough to beat Bama, but I think Bama wins more often than not. Um, by the way, I don't hate the Utah pick. I, I don't hate the Utah pick. I just not going to co-sign it. Yeah. All right, Jared. I think that's it. I think, I think we'll call that in an episode here, Jared. You got anything else before we wrap it up? Um, I'd like to encourage everyone to uh, follow us on TikTok. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on... 
I think I'm out of follows that I care about. But you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, you can subscribe to us on uh, Apple Podcast or Spotify or wherever it is you listen to your podcast. Um, if you're checking out our YouTube channel, make sure to also check out our shorts channel on YouTube. It's, it's the same channel. It's just a playlist. But we also we do shorts. That's what you can find on TikTok, Instagram and YouTube shorts. Uh, and then our full length episodes are also on YouTube and also on your podcast app of choice. And I would appreciate even if you don't consume all of those products, if you even if you're like only ever listen to the audio version of this, I would still really appreciate you uh, following us on any of the you know, don't don't sign up for something if you're not already on the something. But if you're already on the something, give us a follow or a subscribe on it. That's it. Like, even if you don't intend on actually watching the YouTube channels, I would still appreciate a subscription. And also come to our Discord server, discord.sloopcast.com. Hang out with us. Ask yeah. us questions. Especially, um, right, especially right now with football. I can't talk with football season right around the corner. We, our, our Discord channel gets really into it, especially on game day, especially in the in the live chat here and throughout the week, it's a very lively channel. If you love Ohio state, you love talking about college football, come join us. Yeah. And if you want premium access, the discord server is free. It is free. It is free. It is free. Uh, but there is premium access available and you can get that for uh, under, well, right at $3 a month or under $3 a month. If you do an entire year up front and the entire year up front is like, $32 and some change. So it's a really good deal. Um, we watch games live together um, every, almost every Saturday. I don't, I'm not willing to guarantee every, I think we did every Saturday last year, but I'm just, I'm not willing to guarantee that most Saturdays we, we do it. Yep. We take like one or two off a year. We took one off. I don't even remember taking one off last year. Did we? We might have. My memory is garbage. Yeah, yeah but we I only did we it because it, it was a terrible it was week. A bye week. <laughs> I don't think it was. I don't know if it was. But yeah, we only did it because it was a garbage week and no one wanted to do it. Apparently, it's what Austin's telling me. I don't remember. My memory is Garbo. Ohio State played Rutgers that week. It must have been a Garbo week if Ohio State was playing Rutgers. All right, Kyle. That's that's all of the that's all of the plugging. I feel like doing. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Is, is this a is this a good way to start your uh, senior year of high school? You have uh, your your opening game as as a senior. You have six receptions, two hundred and twenty one receiving yards, two Not touchdowns. Bad. Not bad. And two hundred and sixty three all purpose yards. That's, Only two hundred and sixty three. Two hundred and sixty three all purpose yards. That's it for your, for your opener for your opener. Now that was okay. the entire team, though, right? <laughs> nope, that's what uh, Brandon. That's what Brandon did. Uh, Brandon Ennis, for his, yeah, for his uh, for his opener. His yeah, he he looked sharp. He looked sharp. Austin, was that your team? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. But yeah, that's that's awesome. That's. <laughs> As uh, Brandon put it here, that is a 36.8 yards per catch. That's not bad. It's only a <laughs> third of the field. <laughs> all right, that's it, Jared. That's all, all I right. got. That's all we got. That's all we got for this episode. Played him on Monday. We'll play him again on Wednesday. This is Defiance Ohio, who is their name. The name of the band is Defiance Ohio. But they're actually from Columbus. But the name of the the name of the band. The name of the band is, is Defiance, Ohio. So uh, stick around. You can listen to them um, if you're new here. Um, <laughs> yes, Austin, I did do it again. Um, we don't actually play the song on the YouTube version, but we do put a link down in the show notes so you can go listen to it if you want to. If you're listening to the audio version, if you want to hear the song, all you have to do is nothing. So, Kyle, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and, of course, support your local podcast. Once again, this is Defiance, Ohio. <laughs>